Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Thursday, July the 28th. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. I'm going to meet a, a young lady who's making her first appearance with us on uh, Radio Friends. In fact, this is the first time we have dealt with in circle technology and i want to introduce you to terry walden welcome to radio friends terry thank you paul I explain to our listeners and viewers what is in circle technology yeah in circle technologies is a training program for adults with autism and we train them in technology skills such as programming or web development or office essential skills so that they can have hope for a better employment future now, when you say adults with autism, autism, what, what, what age are you starting here? In teens, up to? Uh, yeah, we begin at 18 and we go up to mm -hmm. really any age. So we, in the 20s or 30s? Yes. Someone who has yes. autism right. can come to you yes. for training. Right. We do have summer classes for some high school students as well. But our, our main focus is the older a uh, young adult. Yeah. Now, as far as a as a person with autism, there, there's different types and different uh, severities of autism, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely right. It's a spectrum. If you meet one person with autism, you meet one person with autism. And so we and do... And another person with autism may be totally different. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But are they still eligible to become a part of this program? Well, we really do ask that our students are interested in technology, that okay. you know they spend a ton of time on their computers at home, which is usually no problem, and that they have an interest and some motivation to find work after our program um, in the tech field. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so what, when they come in to you, what are you going to do? What are uh, they going to experience when they come? Okay, well first they come over and we talk and I kind of gauge whether they're interested um, or motivated. And um, I find out whether they're interested in technology like uh, on their own. And if they have some skills already because you know they've had an interest. One of the features of autism is a restricted kind of interest. And so many of ours love to be on their computer constantly. They love to game, they love to search out information, they love to create things. Things. And so I look for that, um, you know, that, that restricted interest, mm -hmm. which um, some would say would be one of their um, disability defining well, very characteristics. Focused. People right. with autism right. are very focused yeah. on things, right? They can be very focused. And we love it when we find somebody who's very focused on their computer. But what we want to do is to navigate them away from just being so like isolated and dependent upon, you know, their computer for their interaction with the world. I mean, that doesn't necessarily give you money back, right. a job, the dignity of having a job and earning income so that they can become independent one day. So what you're doing then mm -hmm. is you're trying to channel that energy into a productive way exactly. for that person and become independent. Right. It is because we know that they are, they are there. They, they, they have those skills, they have that interest, but what happens is that sometimes there is a, a barrier between them and further education. Um, they don't necessarily go the traditional college path that maybe you or I did. Uh, there's maybe some kind of learning difference. There might be some social anxiety. Uh, there might be something that um, causes them to need a, a different way of learning. That's very hands-on, a uh, small group, um, learning that involves both soft skills. How do I communicate on an interview? How do I communicate with people on my team? Mm -hmm. um, and with the tech side, just very uh, project-based so that they have things for their, their resume. And that style of learning, I think, works very well for anybody, but especially for people on the autism spectrum. So somebody listening to us today, if they have a child or a grandchild or mm -hmm. a niece or a nephew who has autism, yes, they can get in touch with you. Definitely. You will visit with that mm -hmm. person to see if their qualifications are met for these classes? Right, yes. Is there a charge? Yes, we have to charge um, fees for our classes. We have instructors who come in from you know tech in, the tech industry or mm -hmm. different um, learning institutions, and so we have to pay our teachers. And right. um, so there is there is like a fee for classes that they would pay. And I would love to talk to 
to anybody about how many that. how many classes how many students can you handle at a time this summer we have 11 students so our max probably right now is about 15 to 20 but we want to you know be able to offer this to individuals and families who are really mm -hmm. searching for that oh, I think it, 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 rare it, space. it opens the door mm -hmm. it opens the door to a brand new world yes uh, you used the term when you came in here, and mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm pulling up a mental blank. That's it, okay. We were talking about learned helplessness. Learned helplessness. Uh -huh. What is learned helplessness? Yeah, so sometimes uh, what happens is that uh, individuals with autism uh, grow up and they, for some reason, have met so many barriers and they become discouraged uh, for, for learning or socialization. And so they become kind of dependent upon some of their caregivers um, to a point where the caregivers are maybe protecting them too much. Mm -hmm. And they, be, they develop something called learned helplessness where they want somebody else to solve their problems all the time. What we want to try to help our students do is become more independent and say, you know, I'm not a victim here. I am somebody who can help determine my own future and I can learn things. I'm not going to be held down by, you know, a really low ceiling that somebody has put in place for me yeah. or I put there myself. Well, and in all fairness, the That's caregivers it. being overly protective, you know, much of that is done out of love. Definitely. It's done yes. out of love, right. but there is a point where there is too much protection right. and you're actually holding that person back in the long run. Right. I'm a parent of a child with autism, a young adult with autism, and so I know that, um, that that's a case, the case, but I've also seen statistics that show that, you know, if a person, you know, only lives at home or never gets a job, that their chances of getting employment later or uh, living an independent um, or happier life is really decreased. Okay. We're out of time. How do they get in touch with you? Yes, um, they can go to our Facebook page at... Uh, Facebook.com uh, and Circle Tech, or our website in CircleTech.org, and um, and find us there. We would love to hear from okay. people. Okay, Terry Walden, thank you so much for coming. Yeah, by. thank you. Uh, specifically designed for young adults, and when we say young adults in the 18 to 30, 35, 40 years old. Right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Young. I consider that young. I do too. <laughs> Good. <laughs> thank you so much, you. Terry Walden. Good to have you here. Thank you. Tomorrow, the City of Columbia will be on. We're out of time for today. If something you'd like to hear or see, drop me an email, pepperpmissouri.edu.